Welcome to another Insights here at Tips for Sociology, where today we will be looking at the work of Stuart Hall. So Stuart Hall is born in 1932 and his early education takes place in Jamaica. He then moves from Jamaica to Oxford, where at Oxford University he begins his study and reads literature. Um, after he completes his literature degree at Oxford, he takes on probably his most important academic role, which is working with the CCCS at the University of Birmingham. That's the Centre for Contemporary Cultural Studies, where he becomes a director and does a significant amount of his um, academic work. As always, it's super important to see where Stuart Hall fits when we look at the spectrum of different sociological theories. That way, when you're doing your A-level and your GCSE work, you understand where you can place him and who will support the arguments that he makes. Stuart Hall is a neo-Marxist. And briefly, before we talk more in depth about Stuart Hall's work, I'm going to explain what that means. Principally, if you are a neo-Marxist, you are fusing together ideas of traditional Marxism with social action theories like interactionism to make a less deterministic theory. That will mean that the neo-Marxists will look at elements such as the impact of the media and labels, which we see Stuart Hall doing, as well as looking at the effects of um, marginalisation on different ethnicities rather than just focusing on social class. So what do we know about Stuart Hall? Well, Stuart Hall's got a huge body of work, but the one that we'll be principally focusing on today is his work in a book called Policing the Crisis. Now, Policing the Crisis is focusing on the crime rate, the police and the media. And it is a book which looks at the problems that are going on and how perhaps the official statistics on crime are skewed and inaccurate due to the impact of the media in the 1970s. Now, it's good to get some context for what is going on in Britain in the 1970s, because it is not an easy time. There are wars, there are recessions, there are um, strikes, riots, troubles in Ireland. There's a lot of negative things that are going on in Britain during that period. Hall will suggest in his work that the media are going to need to scapegoat a group. And that at that time, they will start to blame young black men for the crime of mugging. Quite an American term. We would, might know it's previously street robbery, but mugging is the term that's used. And the young black lads in the UK are portrayed as these kind of violent criminals. Now, according to Hall, the reason for this is to distract from the problems that are going on with capitalism. This is a moral panic of sorts created by the media. And of course, when you get moral panics, you get folk devils, the group to be feared, and you end up with higher levels of deviance culminating at the end. And Hall sees this when he sees the interactions then, then that begin between the police and the young black youth of the day. Higher numbers of stop and search, more arrests, harsher sentences. And this is essentially what he finds in Policing the Crisis. Some really good examples of this taking place are the Brixton riots, which happened in 1981. The first race riots that we really see in Britain where the policing measures um, by an operation they call Operation Swamp, where they um, just surrounded Brixton uh, and Lambeth and those areas with plainclothes police officers uh, and, um, and police officers on duty, stopping and searching large percentages of the black community. Um, and the end of that was kind of an amplification of deviance where the local community kind of fought back and um, rioted, uh, damaged property um, through Molotov cocktails and and the like in, in street battles with the police. Um, as well, and what's really useful about Hall's theory is it, it's very good at charting the impact of the media on crime. Obviously, it's looking at inequality as well because of the treatment of the black community, but also you can look at it from a youth culture perspective as well, because Hall is clear that one of the groups may be one of the subcultures which are impacted are the rude boys who um, are a subculture that uh, are of kind of Jamaican origin, um, but that become prominent and that are also a group that are heavily targeted by the police. Now, as with every theory, there are problems when it comes to Stuart Hall's work. Firstly, He's just looking at Britain in the 1970s and we've come on quite a significant way in the last 15 years of making the police more diverse. 
um, and having a better quality of policing, greater training, uh, and therefore perhaps the biases which may have existed in the 1970s, whether it's caused by um, individual police officers, the police culture, or the impact of the media, will have hopefully um, dissipated or, or gone. Um, but however, we must also suggest as well that Hall will be writing from a very specific Marxist background. Uh, and as um, somebody from an ethnic minority himself, you potentially could look at whether or not subjectively um, he has framed his own experiences to come up with his conclusions. There are potential problems there that you can always put as evaluation points when you're writing about Stuart Hall and particularly policing the crisis. However, do bear in mind that this is a very good example of what the neo-Marxists might call a fully social theory of deviance. It does not just um, start with an act as we see many of the interactionist ideas about the impact of the media beginning with. Rather, it goes back and allows us to say capitalism is the problem, according to Hall. Um, the economic downturn then is a, a, another significant issue. And then we see the rise of the act mugging. And then we see the effects of the labels that move on after that. So you can see a beginning, but you can also see the impact of the labels at the end, something that is rarely done when we come at it from just an interactionist perspective, which is why this neo-Marxist view um, is so useful and um, a really good development that we see in Hall's work. OK, I hope you found that insight into Stuart Hall very useful. As always, I will pop the reference list here to see where I've got my information from. I think Stuart Hall is a very, very important writer and this study is something you can really get to grips with and use very well if you're studying topics like crime and deviance, the media, youth culture, even social stratification. This will be something that will be very, very useful to you. As always, use this alongside whatever your teacher is um, is giving to you at GCSE or at A level. And um, if you have any further questions or any concepts or writers that you would like me to cover in insights, then please let me know. As always, like and subscribe. That would be absolutely brilliant. And I'll see you soon.